So very good evening, good morning, good afternoon. This is for the time zones. I, 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 th I think <clears throat> it's good to see you guys. Uh, as we keep, you know, keep going, probably we'll have some more people dialing in. So the way this webinar work is, uh, you know, by default you'll be muted, and, uh, and unless uh, you unmute and ask, so I, I, I know I, I seriously suggest that you keep your questions at the last in the end. I, I don't intend to bore you more than 30 minutes or 30, 40 minutes max, and leave this forum for 15, 20 minutes for Q and A. That's that's because that's something I believe that uh, very crucial uh, for me to have a question and answer and interactive session. So uh, once again, welcome. Thanks for taking your time out and dialing this very webinar series. We have this uh, webinar series from Per Thoughts, as you know, a monthly basis every month. Last, <coughs> excuse me. Last time when I presented uh, this session last month, it was primarily uh, on the uh, uh, a very new concept called Alpha Project Manager. Uh, those who, you know, who have uh, missed the session can obviously you know pick up the recording from Prothor site. There is a recording which is available. I have conducted part one and part two uh, on the special request uh, from the participants uh, i sec did second part as well uh, but yeah so uh, welcome back today and uh, today's uh, topic as you could see from my slide this is something called organizational project management maturity model uh, concept which is uh, relatively new to be honest in india but it's not new in the world of project management uh, Though it's a little uh, process oriented, and whenever we talk about process oriented approach, it's always boring to learn. It's always uh, you know, uh, too uh, tightly coupled in terms of theory, theoretical model. But it's a model, guys, right? So no choice. Uh, the, my interest here is to do a little more research into the world of maturity and their project management it doesn't talk about individual projects though but it talks about an organization right it's a it is it, either your either your company itself or the bu the business unit in you know on the project management or the pmo itself for that matter now of course the pmo is a part of opm3 but what we're going to uh, learn together today on this webinar is the process oriented outcome, the best practices, and the various maturity model types uh, and matrices. And to end with, we will do a comparison of at least one another model, which is CMMI, globally used in the world of software uh, management. I'm not going to uh, uh, keep uh, you engaged more on the multiple models, but I do have a list of other models as well. So let's begin. Uh, defining OPM3, right? So let's let's talk about. I'm not going to skip my slide here. Uh, you can always look at my profile on the, the LinkedIn. But if I have to look at the OPM3. Right? And the most important question, I would rather go into why than what first. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a little different approach today, getting into why of this maturity. So the increasing pace of the change that we all face today is competitive world. The complexities of the economy and the global competition requires the top level executives, middle level executives, and the others to re examine their strategy. I'm talking about the organization strategy or a business unit strategy to fulfill their stakeholder expectations and meet the market needs or market demands. Now, this refinement of a strategy requires a new focus 
on the product development, operational effectiveness, efficiency improvements, and customer service enhancements. However, uh, what I feel is defining the strategy, to be honest, itself does not ensure the success. So for example, uh, my own organization in the past, many years back, just defined a strategy, uh, which, you know, from the perspective of defining the strategy, which was, you know, done by the one of the great consultants, I don't want to name them, but they just defined it so beautifully. Now, they, it, it, it was an organization-wide strategy which was defined. However, the problem was it didn't ensure the success at the end of the day towards the meeting the goals and objectives of the organization. So as you all well know, just to repeat once again, how this entire workflow comes from the top. It's like vision of the company, then the mission statement of the organization to achieve the mission, uh, sorry, to achieve the vision, you have your goals and objectives created and from the goals and objectives, you have a strategy come out, right? So we all know this and those who probably do not know this, it's very interesting to know this. So I'm saying defining just the strategy itself is not sufficient enough. So the need of an art, in my case, my example, the strategy was not executed to achieve the right sort of goals and objectives. Uh, the need of an R also is to ensure that executives look at the organizational agility, focus on the organizational agility and the project management capability of the company to ensure success. And that gets into my third line in the slide, translate your strategy into organization success through, through the world of portfolio, programs, and projects. And cutting across, there's something called PMO, which we all know, right? So this is the only way you could succeed when you can proudly say, hey guys, I had my strategies defined at the top, and now, I have translated those strategies in practice to the smart goals and objectives which have been achieved, right? So ultimately, the success is the name to the game that I just spoke about. Now, organizations should also seek the ways to translate this strategy into the organizational success using the meaningful ways, meaningful processes, meaningful methodologies, meaningful procedures. Uh, this is where the uh, model of organization project maturity. Um, my another research uh, goal, to be honest, guys, is also to do a little more deep dive into this OPM3 uh, linking to OPM. Uh, probably a little later, I'll talk about how OPM and OPM3 differs. So when I just talk about OPM, it's organizational project management. And when I say organization, you know, OPM3, it's a organization project management maturity model, right? But the M3 do not talk about M cube in, in a nutshell. So the goal here is to select the specific initiative for the organization which are needed to deliver the strategy and produce better performance and better results. And thereby you get sustainable competitive advantage. So that's that's where uh, you come to my last line of this particular slide. It talks about building the project oriented culture. We don't, we generally don't talk about the program oriented culture, but portfolio oriented culture, but in a nutshell, we talk about the project oriented culture. I'll give you another example to this uh, to prove my line it, 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 it's so practically relevant i was talking to uh, uh, the head of hr in one of the organization just a couple of weeks back and I, you know, in fact in, i had a in person meeting they're coming up with a, up with a digital uh, business strategy 
and this particular company uh, is into the insurance uh, segment general insurance segment uh, coming with a new digital uh, strategy for the entire so in fact he said that sort of you know you i'm going to have a uh, complete uh, business process digitized that means let's say for example you have to buy a general insurance insurance for car no gone by the days when you have to go to the uh, you know to to the company in prep in person uh, you know you ask for the quotations you ask for or you probably send an email gone by the days and you know executives will serve you it's all then to end uh, on the ios or android applications uh into the mobile or it's a website already been developed end to end so starting from the inquiry itself till the which is in place which is also in a digital format and the entire information life cycle is been digitized so it's talking to me about what kind of a maturity model that we can probably develop so i was consulting them and i was talking about the experiences of said you guys you know when you start off obviously you are at the zero maturity level so there is nothing called zero maturity level you know if i tell you that you know got to have a zero maturity level in organization or you you tell your ceo is you know it's a zero maturity the first thing is you know he'll he'll, he'll bite you back obviously so there is nothing called zero maturity but what i mean to say was it still to standardize here so the first thing i know and the model i I'll, i'll talk about the standardization process before it gets into maturity but the first thing is to achieve the standardization right so uh, i had a good amount of conversation where i said what's your uh, ultimate say so he said it's all you know entire process to be digitized and for that you know what the way they do everything for them become a project everything so creation creation of something becomes a project um uh improvement of something become a project and there is a need of an hour for them to create a uh, different project ideas even for you know you won't believe the operations are looked as projects forget about the improvements in the, within the operations something that we talk about in the program management but even the operations day to day operations uh, that they do they build it into the project structure so it, it was very nice learning for me too uh, and and i wanted to do a little more research how do you actually uh, project you know uh, operationalize the project management world and then reverse way you projectize the operation management world anyway so that that's something which was interesting uh, example i thought i'll probably give so let's go to the next slide what is the content of your opm3 when you talk about opm3 so there are primarily opm3 is you know a uh, cage three things one the best practices two the domains and three the process improvement itself now how this concept of opm3 came up so it's primarily the brain shell of pmi project management institute that you know of and it's it's one one aspect of opm3 is to provide the best practices into the world of project program portfolio management and second also to cover not just the project management as a domain but to cover the program and portfolio management as well this two domains as well right and of course cutting across this three project program portfolio which i always keep saying it's a pre cube or a p3 model uh there's something called pmo which you know of project management office or program or portfolio management office so in a nutshell if i have to summarize opm3 in one slide this is what this summary goes to start with the opm3 is summarized into four stages of maturity first stage standardization what standardization we'll talk about it uh, second 
measurement. Third, control. And fourth, cont continuous improve. And I'm sure you would have definitely heard about these terms in the various parlance of different, different, different business aspects. Those who are software uh, folks on the on, on this particular webinar would have heard in terms of CMI models. Those who are in you know, part of Six Sigma or who are part of quality initiatives in their respective organizations or green or uh, you know uh, uh, black belt certified, who or, or to be certified, those who would have you know those who will hear the similar kind of terms in the Six Sigma as well. So the terms are not relatively new. But yes, the way the project management fraternity in the organization use these terms are literally, literally to be seen. And that's where I say it's it's a relatively new concept in India, right? But it's so-called evolved concept in the developed countries like US, US and UK. Uh, even the Prince too, for that matter, uh, have got uh, the standardization framework uh, included in it for the pro projects which are uk based but this particular term called opm3 primarily is a brain sheet of bi which is the us based uh, not profit organization so those who are you know practicing the six sigma i just wanted to uh, talk about a little bit about how do you apply this four different things or how do i compare with the six sigma initiative this is a slide for you guys so the opm3 uh, four different uh, aspects, standardize, measure, control, and improve. Uh, each one is defined in the way the Six Sigma model has been done. So standardize, I say, identify the problem process and describe the process itself. Measure, identify the inputs and outputs, use those inputs and outputs to prioritize and identify and implement the measures. Control, analyze the measurements for variations. And of course, I didn't do RCA for the unwanted variations and improve uh, based on your standardization measurement and your monitoring and control you continuously improve in fact i'd say when i talk about improvement it's in the cmi remember in the cmmi level five only few organizations in the world you talk about the continuous improvement life cycle and your your best of the organization for example in process and tcs of the world do not stop at the level five, which is your continuous improvement. Oh, sorry, do, do not say for the level four, which is the uh, you know much more matured in any of the uh, models that you have. Uh, it talk go beyond and it talks about continuous improvement. And I've got a gist of this in the OPM three in this. Uh, standardized measure control and improve so when you say improve you continuously keep improving and this is not just related to the projects friends it is even the operations as well because when i talk about portfolio and program it is not just projects it's projects plus operations both together so the question comes to the mind what do maturity models seems to have in common what would you expect in terms of the maturity model but what it doesn't have or what does it lack? And what's the value of using this? Can we quantify that value? Can I relate this to the business value that I carve out from the projects or program or portfolio? Or can I compare this with the uh, portfolio aspect of the project, no, uh, project program for you know, portfolio management, which links to the business strategies of the company? These are the answers which probably you'll hear from me in the next 10 minutes. So what do what does OPM3 have? As we just spoke about the standardization, measurement, control, improvement. And the last one which I was mentioning about is the top level which governs these four things, which is called governance. The, the similar governance project you know, process that you have in your organization, we call it as a business governance or in your project management world, we, which we call it as a project governance. So the same governance process controls or the monitors the standardization, measurement, control, and improvement. Um, I'm going to skip this slide uh, for a while. I spoke enough about it. Um, 
but I, I really wanted to touch upon this particular slide. What is the value of having these levels? One, no matter what you do in the world of projects, program, portfolio management, uh, you always go back to the drawing board and say, where can I improve? And this is the most common question people ask me. Uh, when do I come, when I consult, people ask me, so when can I improve? I'm a much more mature, mature organization. I was actually talking to a general manager from Reliance and uh, he was uh, trying to explain the entire process flow in the world of petroleum. Uh, and the, the various offshore projects that and onshore project that Reliance uh, does, uh, you know, he was uh, explaining me uh, in, in depth. And the question was, there are in, enough amount of Six Sigma initiatives that we've taken. But when I try to marry those Six Sigma initiatives with the projects, I always wonder where do I bring my uh, maturity in the, because I really don't think that the projects are mature though the processes are mature. So what do you mean by projects are not mature, processes are mature. So if your processes are mature, then obviously your projects tend to get mature. Say that, so Rob, no, it's not the way that you think through. There's a lot of improvement which is required in the project management processes. Right? Of course, yes, I'm sure that for that you, no, no doubt you have a lot of processes which you could keep improving. But an interesting uh, scenario in the world of, uh, you know, the conversation that, that we had was how do I marry these two different aspects of process and the project project program portfolio. And this is this is where it strike me to have this kind of a webinar uh, through my little bit of a study on OPM3. Uh, and of course, I'm, I'm still learning guys, just like you. Uh, the learning never ends though. So it's interesting to see how these projects that you do aligned with the processes that organization have set up or your PMO have set up. So let, let's talk about this. So the first one is identify improvement targets. So how do I put up the targets first of all? Could, it, could, it, could I say 10% improvement in terms of the quantification by end of one year or 20% improvement in terms of the maturity that I have today? Yeah, I can put that. Second, support mat maturity assessment. Of course, this is you know, when you have to have your measurement targets or the improvement targets, which are of course both different, then you have to have your assessment also in terms of the present as is. And you, know, you won't believe when you guys go back and apply this particular model to your respective organization. And you I probably, you might be just surprised that your organization in terms of project management maturity is absolutely at level zero or worst case or rather best case is level one. When I did for multiple organizations, this is my feedback. No maturity. Very rough statement, but though a bold statement because that itself give me a improvement target. Where do I go next? Now, there's another point uh, that I always keep thinking. Um, do you really put up a target to reach the maximum maturity model level? No. You always increase step by step. So if you're at level one, if you're at a standardization level, then probably you go back to the next level. If you're at the next level, you go to the next level and not directly jump. Couple of organizations who I know had a very stringent targets in terms of moving from level one to level five, or I would say the maturity model uh, one to model four levels, and they failed miserably, right? So that's another thought process and a suggestion to the companies as well. The third thing is, uh, identifying where your organization is on continuum. When you say continuum in terms of the assessment and the repeatability of those assessments, 
towards the maturity. Communicate a sequence to increasing maturity. If you do some good things, of course, a communicate organization wide. This is where your stakeholder identification and stakeholder support or engagement you know, play a very crucial role. It depends on you how you know how best you can engage those stakeholders and communicate across the initiative that you have taken, right? And the last one, the ability to benchmark against similar kind of organizations. So I won't, I won't say you know you compare apple to orange, but either you compare orange to orange or apple to apple, right? Okay. The next slide talks about the you know, various maturity models that I reviewed over you know, probably 30 different models. And I have a nice slide on it coming forward. Is this very complex and deliberately I kept it as it is uh, jumbled up, right? So you might find a couple of them which might be familiar to you, but most of them you might not have probably either heard about or he would have come across. But this is interesting. So the PM, the city OPM3 is not just the model. There are multiple models which are available uh, across the globe. And various types of the business, various types have been developed in which I know that management in addition and the ID for the got called priority model I have like this um, yes, that we from this, but talk about in pro because that is when we talk about about the OPM is all about and go to process let's produce absolute any or pm i'm not sure your uh, or pm is this webinar to uh, certify obviously in the input to same framework or the more with more the frameworks which keep uh, manufacturing have input your raw material which gets converted into output is nothing but your process. and through your is called in progress or through something called uh numbers manufacturing when you talk about input tools you have something called mechanism and feeds so tells you hey did you get you want or did you want okay i have to think no, itself is a feedback go back and flow but again continue the loop and yes wanted so i think probably this is the absolute the cost of uh, i thought i'll repeat this is the uh, here i've got a slide on the process aspect the pulling we analyze them and project resource requirements to create a project schedule right an example about if i have a project schedule which is the outcome 
your network all right whether you are using a cpm or a port you need a network you're using a version technique simple tools to estimate durations and uh, uh, in terms of your uh, who does what assumptions constraints uh, your remember through various like your analysis the statistical analysis the mathematical compression method your finding method of your project scheduling compression resource leveling uh, level resource level the resource your ms primavera software and the exposure this is that you use important part controls schedule which i wanted what do i do because i give a feedback this is wanted or this is not aligned my strategy feedback that i get or i say these goals are not what do i do i change my inputs or probably i change the combination of inputs different tools and techniques and get which is different than what i know what i expected so i it to a the outcome which i would have expected in the beginning i really need to put up a measures in place which will control and this at the project compliances can process where maturity talks about continuous improvement uh the way we you know talk about i'm going to do you know uh, skip this slide on a portfolio uh but yeah it's the uh the order a process orientation approach pmp certify you no know, we would need kind of a process call initiate which means a request for a new project or to you know for a new initiative or a new plan so new you know after initiate come out so where you have multiple multiple planning in place whether it's your scope or your schedule or your or your key or your or your procurement in the world of project management we call these knowledge areas right so you create by project management by putting the subsidiary plans and execute talks about just ensuring that you have executed as planned right your project plan execution your performance this is the area where your performance happen administration in terms of procurement quality assurance as part manage team development part of a human resource development or so human resource and most like uh, it's going to be a a controlling aspect which is a, which play a major role from initiation to closure this is the aspect which go end to end where you have a change control or you have a scope control schedule control quality control risk management control or procurement control communication etc now this is the project management process uh, aspect in terms of orientation the portfolio aspect as well could absolutely absolutely in the portfolio management as well and in three processes cut across your orientation aspect of pro program management portfolio management this is the linkages come if you thought through that okay the processes are only related to the project management see the linkages within it no not the same as orientation aspect program and portfolio as well this is a most important when you define a model because your maturity model is not just related to project management it cut across all three probably last couple of minutes i'm going to uh, talk about one specific slide which will help you with 
uh, something called the best practice in the world of the OPM3. And that's a slide. So this slide talks about entire governance aspect, the entire process management in OPM3. So about four different levels, right? Standardization, measurement, control, and improvement. For standardization, let's talk about the process standardization and not project standardization. Please remember, project standardization or program standard is always which you have created within project management. It's process standardization. So my level talk always about the standardization process. You would wonder. Uh, so if you talk about the standardization in first level itself, then what the non standardization and this is where I to the drawing board and say this is level zero. This is level zero. when you don't have a standardization in place first, because only in standardization you build your measurement level and on, upon measurement level you build your control and then once you have a control level place you improvement your governance cut across all this work now can i measure without a standardization yes of course but it doesn't make sense it won't give you a, you know it won't yield the result all this it probably wouldn't make sense can i do a control without measurement yes of course because as monitoring and across the initiation right but you have your process control in the fine manner you want you would just probably invest your time and you you will repent oh that was a time loss and this is the key pain area of the organization to achieve opm3 levels the basic level of the PMO, for example, the project management office itself, you know, the PMO itself becomes a very, very, very tedious for the organization because they, the first thing they ask, what is my ROI? And when I have a question on what is my ROI, then guys, this OPM3 is much, much better than PMO. So if you, do don't if you can't do a PMO in a real real manner, uh, then sorry, much more advanced level to the organization. And to achieve that, uh, you need to really 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 do a lot of change management, which talks about changes. People's mindset need to be changed. So. So, you know, if you, when I talk about the process governance, uh, which include your project governance, portfolio governance, more no more than that, I'm talking about the you know organization of culture and the change management at the top. So, coming back to the same concept of the vision, mission, goals, objectives, and strategies, and governing all this is a one single aspect of process oriented the most impro, you know, important thing is to ensure that you have your mindsets defined you have to achieve this yes you have to achieve this you want to be a green belt certified black belt certified for that you need to be geared up in person similarly organization also need to think through you, if you have to have of a continuous, and it doesn't come in day one. It was not built in day one. So, it, but you need to be oriented. You no, know, it's absorb this investment. It's really, need to change.